Hello, viewers. Welcome to another episode of the Nanaya Ayabua podcast. I am so glad you are with us today. I have today in the studio with me Alex Adekunle Adefemi, coach Triple A. Mm. Wow. Triple, triple A. Hey. So if you have a double, no, this is a triple A is in the house. Coach Triple A, or if you don't mind, I'll call you Alex, is yeah. a public speaker, certified UK business executive life coach, peak performance strategist, and an accredit, uh, accredited management consultant. So he doesn't come cheap. He doesn't come easy. He is a man about what he says and what you need to do to make your life better. He is also the host of the Triple A show on CKMS 102.7 Radio Waterloo. Waterloo, yes. Coach Triple A, welcome to the Nanaya podcast. Ah, finally. <laughs> <laughs> finally, I am, I am, I am being, it's about so to go honored. down. Yes, so <laughs> I'm so honored to be on your podcast. I am so, so honored. Finally, Nana decides to call, I mean, humble me to come oh. on this podcast and just, you know, um, share a few of the ideas that I think I know uh, and then share them on the podcast. But Nana, I was telling you earlier, you look so beautiful. I mean, Thank doing you. the podcast is with you, mm, mwah, <laughs> looking like African queen. Ah. Thank you. I appreciate. I truly do appreciate. So in, in this in this podcast, the, what I want us to look at is a journey of self-discovery and possibilities. Mm -hmm. um, you and I are coming from a background, say, with from the continent, even though we've been in this country different stages. There are certain things you see that I don't and certain things I see that you don't. Yes, but as a coach, Within the context of Africa, coaching is not really a thing that is spoken about, neither is mentoring a thing that is really spoken. Yeah. But that is the key to success when we look at our Western counterparts and, uh, you know, um, going through life and achieving some form of success, one may say, yeah. in life. But before we get into all this juicy, nitty gritty learning or a yeah. masterclass of, you know, living authentically and whatnot let's get a view of who our coach is so your background growing up and your decision to become a coach three questions in one background growing up and decision to become a coach all right so yes um background growing up i i born and bred lagos uh ikeja ikeja people if you know ikeja you know Lagos. ikeja is the is the capital of lagos state literally mm -hmm. uh, so yes. i literally was born and raised in ikeja so i'm an ikeja boy to the core uh for anybody who knows about ikeja shout out to you out there um so i was born and bred in lagos i'm a lagos boy to the core uh lagos flows in my veins literally i used to remember i i did my university at the university of Adoikiti in Ekiti state Mm -hmm. But it's now called Ekiti State University, by the way. So, um, and so I remember any time I come back from Ekiti, which is like a four-hour journey um, back to Lagos. Every time I come on down from the bus, I would strap up my bag and go, "Yeah, this is Lagos. <laughs> you gotta be smart. <laughs> there's no, there's no space for for being slow in Lagos. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. No, there's no space." So I'm moving through Lagos and I'm thinking the energy of Lagos is so intoxicating. I won't lie to you. Mm -hmm. Literally, there's no place like Lagos State. I miss Lagos. So um, basically, that's that's where I was born and raised. And then mm -hmm. um, my background and how did I come about coaching? I think for me, coaching is my calling in life. It's my assignment. It's my God-given assignment. My job is to help um, unleash the excellence in people. And um, there's a particular passion I have for Black people. Uh, to help them unleash their excellence because i just feel that there's a lot of trapped potential in the black man that is on that hasn't been um exercised or maximized mm -hmm. and because of that um the the you find out that someone said that the most the most uh uh the most the richest place on earth is the graveyard i would think the richest I, place on earth is the african graveyard uh, let, I, I think, think that I would, was uh, les brown 
Yes, I think Les Brown, Brown was the last person yes. I had seen. But I even yes. think, personally, think the, the richest place on earth is the African is the African uh, uh, graveyard. graveyard because of the amount of potential, raw potential mm -hmm. that dies with people, giftings that die with people uh, because mm -hmm. of certain things that hold them back. And then some of those things, we will talk about them here. So that's what really drove me to want to do what I do. Now, mm -hmm. where the journey started for me was when I was in high school. And I've told this story before, and it was the fact that at, in high school, I became a serial failure. I was failing in class. So in, back in high school in Nigeria, if you fail a class, I don't know how it is in, in, the, in North America, but you fail a class, you have to repeat the class. Oh, it's not like that here. Oh, yeah. So over here, over back in Nigeria, if you fail a year, you repeat the year. So there I was, I repeated the year, and I failed again, I repeated the year again. So my 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 so original you became the papa classmate. of the class. <laughs> no, I wasn't papa, but I was I was I was senior. I was, yeah, I was much much older than those I graduated with. Now, mm -hmm. what happened was those who were originally the same um, class with me, were supposed to be in the same set with me, had then gone two years ahead of me and graduated two years before me. And so it was it was in that it was in that state of despair that I was in for about a year and. I literally just, I lost, I lost belief in myself. I was a very confident mm -hmm. kid, but I lost belief in myself. I lost, I mean, in fact, one of my friends who originally were originally in the same class eventually told me that oh, we we're friends and he knew me and he eventually thought to me, he thought they had spoken among their friends that I wasn't going to make it in life. That I would, that it didn't look like I was going to make it in life because I mean, I was, I was now a failure, literally. So I was being, it was mean it was me they were using to describe you know that you know you want to be a failure like uh so that's pretty much the kind of um situation I, I found myself in but then god was able to help me open my eyes within that time then what happened was i had shifted so when what you normally have back then is that you have um the in each when you get to the senior 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 classes there are three years in the senior class and that's like, what you have with the YEC and all that. Like guys. senior secondary school. So you have senior secondary school. So you get senior mm -hmm. secondary school, you move from junior secondary school to senior secondary school. Mm -hmm. And that's three years. And mm -hmm. in those three years, um, you can you get to choose whether which major you will go with. There are three majors: it's science, commercial, mm -hmm. or arts. So science mm -hmm. is basically your is majorly focused on chemistry, physics, biology. It's that's the major. And then in, in commercial, you, you're looking at the majors that are commercial, economics, mm -hmm. and all those things that do with numbers. Mm -hmm. So most people who do commercial are those who are interested in numbers a lot. Mm -hmm. And then, then you have the art class and those who are um, more focused on literature, um, um, law. If you want to study law, you go to the mm -hmm. art class. Uh, in the, if you want to study law in the university, you go to art class in the high school. So mm -hmm. that was the So I was in sciences when I failed. <laughs> <laughs> I was in sciences and then I then moved to art and then failed again and then that was when my then when I just felt okay I was done I was a failure I was going to make it in life I was living in that despair but then I what what do you think was it that was not allowing you to you know succeed so I'm this I discovered later in life that I may have been dealing with ADHD, um, and that kind of like um, been with 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 age and with understanding, um, mm -hmm. I started figuring out. Okay, there's a different way. I struggle with distractions, so there's a different way in which I do certain things, and I get distracted easily with stuff. So I started doing a bit of research into it, and then had to see uh, a therapist who then worked with me, and then said, okay, it's very likely that there are traces of ADHD, but it's not the hyper one. It's more of just the uh, attention deficit situation. So, mm -hmm. um, and so that, at that point, I was a teenager and I was heavily distracted, heavily distracted um, because, and this is what happens to me. So when I realized that I'm giving, I'm, I was, I'm dealing with something that I'm not enjoying, I distract myself. So I wasn't enjoying the science class. So then I distracted myself to other more fun things and I wasn't paying attention. I wasn't attending classes. I was being thrown, literally. I was, I was bad. I was terrible. 
I, I understand exactly where you're coming from. And the reason why I'm laughing so much is yes. that it's similar to my narrative. Oh, is wow. that I had no business being in a science class because mm. initially I went to senior secondary. The courses I chosen was literature, English literature, and French. Okay. Towards the path of journalism. Oh, interesting. I, 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 I'm a reader. I love to read. I love yeah. to write and all uh, yeah. those kind of conversations. That, that, actually, that actually fits you a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but I ended up in sciences, right? Yeah. And it was difficult because chemistry, physics, uh, biology is, is okay. Agricultural science, surprisingly, was one of my best courses because I mm. also lived in the village and then mm. you have, yes, you had the natural agriculture going on. So I got a lot of the traditional knowledge from there. So I was an A student in agricultural science, yeah. but all the other sciences, I wasn't. Nah. So I, whilst a physics teacher is teaching, you see me with a novel reading. I wasn't interested. <laughs> I asked one question and now I listen to astrophysics, uh, astrophysics and laugh yeah. that what business do I have to calculate the distance between the earth and the moon? It's not that I'm going there. What business do I have with NASA? <laughs> And it's and it's very very interesting, you know. With time, and I think part of the challenge then was by living back, growing up in Africa, it was that we were made to believe that those that were become they're going to become successful, really successful. Those are those who were in science class, those who were yes. going to become doctors, are going to become nurses, pharmacists, and all those guys. And those are going to become really successful. So parents kind of like encourage you, uh, in some cases, literally force you. <laughs> to do sciences. I wasn't forced, but I was sort of encouraged to do sciences because once they think that you're, you're, you're smart, you're intelligent, that you should be in those classes. And it, it didn't work out for me. And then mm -hmm. I found, but when I got to art, I found that was when I started finding the first time I found my love for psychology was through art. Mm -hmm. So this was through literature. Mm. Was the fact that when I started being introduced to analyzing characters in a, mm -hmm. in a play, in a story. And that was my first fascination with human psychology. I'm like, wow, this is amazing. So, but I didn't know it was human psychology at the time. So I just thought it was just, you know, um, it was just, uh, I just love stories. So yes. I will read stories, I would enjoy reading stories and we'll have to analyze the stories. Mm -hmm. But then that side of me came out and I became one of the best students in class. I became one of the best students in class. Literally, all my teachers knew me. I was, they were all like, oh, Alex, uh, oh, oh, he's, uh, oh, he's number one, he's number one. By the time I did my YEC, that is the uh, the, en the entrance exam, what you call the final West, exam. West uh, African. The West African um, Examination Council. Yeah. Yeah, so by the time I did it back in, uh, I, I straight A's, it was just straight A's all on literature, um, and all those stuff. So mm -hmm. what then happened? Though, but God, but God would have it. I wanted to study law. So because I was, I could talk. I was very articulate. I was very outspoken. Everybody was like, "Oh, since you couldn't do medicine, you had to be a lawyer." Right. Literally, because I mean, you speak a lot. So I kept trying to get into universities for law. But then they, I couldn't get in. I get because I couldn't hit the cutoff point. Now mm -hmm. what happened was that I picked this university. I picked. Um, their cutoff was so high, mm -hmm. and then the university, the other university, because when you're doing the entrance exam to university, it was called JAM, and if you're doing mm -hmm. those exams back then, you you were allowed to pick uh, a first choice university and a second choice university. Mm -hmm. So back in those days, you don't do entrance exams for those schools. You do a general entrance exam, and mm -hmm. then um, you pick the university you want to go to, and then if you pass, and those ones will set their own um, cutoff points. Mm -hmm. If you pass it. And then you can then you can then start um, your get into you get admission. So um, the school I picked had a higher um, what's it called. So my result was good, but it wasn't just high enough. Now it just the power. The other school I chose was second choice. They were now trying to set up some kind of like precedence. So the new VC I just came up was trying to stamp his authority, and he said, okay, so if you pick our school for second choice. Because you went to, because it was a state university and that was a federal university. So if you go, if you pick us second choice or behind a, a federal university, 
our cutoff point for law goes high. But if you pick us for first choice, our cutoff is low. So most people that got into law that year had lesser lesser score than I was in my, than I had in jam. But because I chose them for second choice, I didn't make it. <laughs> so um, the option was they were going to offer they were offering me either psychology or literature or English. But because I didn't understand that what I was doing, what I enjoyed in literature then was psychology, I said, oh, because I love English, I love literature, so I picked English. So I studied English in university, but then gradually I started working with people, helping them find their purpose in life. Because I realized for myself that the minute I found what I enjoyed and what I was good at, I began to excel. Mm. So that made me think, hmm, so if I help people find what they enjoy and what they're good at, they are likely to excel as well. So that was the first lesson, and that was where it started drawing close. By the time I got into 300 level, I became fully aware. So I set up an organization on campus called the Phenomenal Network International. And then mm. what it was was a youth leadership organization that was helping young people be able to um, excel in life and develop leadership skills. And so I started off that in the university. And then by the time I left university, um, I worked. I started working in advertising for a while. And then from advertising, I went into uh, learning and development. And then I started working in learning and development and I got my certification as, as a coach. And so from there, there from, from there on, the rest is history. And I started really working with people and, and <laughs> here we are today. And now we have you here with us in Canada. Yes, 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 yes. yes. You are very much appreciated. Thank you you are very much Thank appreciated, appreciate it as well. I appreciate Alex. It as well. Yes. Guys, if you have not subscribed to the Nanaya Yabua podcast, please do so. 98% of those who watch have not yet subscribed, but only 2% have. So for me to be able to bring in a quality people such as coach triple a and mm. others onto the show i need your support to be able to bring them so that you have this you know critical conversations that will positively impact your lives yeah. so please do subscribe so therefore give what a give me how many years have you been coaching then well i would say give or take now I officially started coaching professionally um, at, mm. in 2012. 2012. So yeah. that would say um, almost about 13, 14 years there about. 14. Uh, 40, is that 14 years? Yeah. So yes. really 14 years now. Uh, mm. Been in the game, work, working with people, helping them thrive, and working with people at different levels and helping them excel. I have, I just wanted to let you know I have just subscribed. <laughs> <laughs> I have just subscribed. So Thank just you. Another extra subscriber. So, guys, please go out there and subscribe to this. Go. This is value. This is value for for you and for anyone who watches this. So, I guarantee you that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. So, fourteen years of doing this. Um, of doing this. What would you define as? success as successful for you in coaching an individual a business a group what are some of the things you look at to mm. say okay i've done it and i've been successful at it okay so if i understand the question you're asking me what yes. how would i describe success as a coach or as a coach success for me as a person who's a coach Suc okay so what i'm asking is as a coach who uh, who coaches people or yeah. businesses yeah what would you define as successful when you coach people or businesses growth growth mm -hmm. growth is what i call success i don't believe in success i believe in succeeding succeeding okay. so what that means is that it's an ongoing process mm -hmm. it's a journey and when you grow consistently that means you are succeeding that's the way i see it so the person who doesn't grow is a person who is failing person who's not growing and how do you grow you grow here in your mind that's the first place you grow 
And if you can grow in your mind, it begins to show up in your life and you show up in your business, show up in your career. And so the more you grow in your mind, the more it then plays out in those areas of your life. So the question then is, um, are you growing? Um, um, Tony Robbins put it this way, he said, progress equals happiness. That's where he put it. Progress equals happiness. Um, and he also put something, created something called the can I, which is something I learned early, early in my coaching journey. Mm -hmm. so the idea, the concept of the can I, C-A-N-I, which is constant and never ending improvement. Oh. Constant and never ending improvement. Growth. Literally. That's what success is. As long as you're growing, you are succeeding. That's, um, that's the first thing. Secondly, I do also believe that success is a person. Success is first of all a person before it's a thing. So success, you have to realize that success has to be who you are. So if you are, so that brings back to the concept of growing. So if you are growing, you are successful, you are being successful or you are succeeding as a person, and then you can then create more success around you. So you can create success as impact, you can create success as money, you can create success as achievements, but it has to start from within. So success starts from within who you are, your mind, think, your thinking, your belief systems, your values. And then it, it then determines the kind of goals that you set for yourself. And then those goals then determine, um, and then how you go about pursuing those goals will then determine if you are succeeding or not. And that's, that's where growth comes from, literally. I hope that makes sense. Oh, yes. I'm just take, making a note here. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I was just making a note. Yes. Actually, that was supposed to be the last last question of this conversation. But I <laughs> I said, no, I, we, we need to get to it first and then we, we will get Fantastic. to the rest. Because Fantastic. we've established what success is and growth yes. is yes. so that with all the conversations, we yes. use that as the, uh, you know, That's the linchpin. Brilliant. Yes. Yes. So let, let's, let, let's come to, everybody has some form of philosophy that yeah. guides them yeah. in life. Yeah. As a coach, as somebody who, t who, who encourages people, who pushes people to their, um, how do we call it? Let, let, to their, to their maximum. L let me read this, um, this quote from Tim Galloway, it says, coaching is unlocking people's potential to yeah. maximize their own performance. Mm -hmm. It is helping them to learn rather than teaching them. Mm -hmm. What is your philosophy? My philosophy is, I'll put it this way. Um, it's a mentor of mine that actually said this to me years ago. And he said that, everything rises and falls on your mind. That the quality of your life can never be better than the quality of your thoughts. Mm -hmm. So how you think determines what you, what you eventually do and who you eventually are. Mm -hmm. So for me, it starts here. The philosophy of um, excellence and success is in the mind. So you must grow your mind. That is the ultimate, that's the ultimate assignment and that's your ultimate, that should be your ultimate goal as a human being. Grow your mind. mind. When the quality of your thoughts will determine the quality of your life. Mm -hmm. So what you're, you're, you're a married person, the quality of your mind will determine the quality of your marriage. Mm -hmm. You are a business person, the quality of your mind, you determine the quality of your business. You are a career person, career person, the quality of your mind determines the quality of your career. You are a politician, the quality of your mind determines the quality of your politics. Your mind is the ultimate thing that you must grow. And if you don't grow your mind, you are as good as dead. Well, folks, you heard it from the coach himself. If you do not grow your mind, you are as good as dead. Yes. Um, 
and, and maybe I'm going to add a little bit of seasoning to it as Please well. Not too much, Pepe. Because uh, yeah, for yeah. many of us, we do think that, for instance, we've gone to school and we're working and that is it. Mm. We're bringing in the money. But you need to still do continuous learning, continuous education. And it doesn't have to be what you are. You can decide to, to learn more about where you work. But yeah. when it comes to developing yourself as a human being, you can also choose to learn more about who you are as a person. Yeah. And I think sometimes that's where within our healthcare industry that we forget as human beings that we don't even know who we are as people, yeah. as human beings, taking yeah. care of other human yeah. beings yeah. and then we start getting a lot of issues or running into a lot of issues so that was just the spice on top uh, if i may let me add this yes. to it um and the word what you talked about brought this also to the forefront mm -hmm. um that you have to realize that as a human being that you are a three-dimensional being okay you are a spirit you have a soul you live in the body Mm -hmm. So um, you must be conscious of finding growth in all those dimensions of who you are. You can the, the challenge a lot of times that we focus so much on the physical. Oh, so mm -hmm. what do I wear? Um, how do I look? Which is good. It's important. But then again, mm -hmm. we neglect the soul. We neglect our spirit. And you are a three-dimensional being. You operate in three different dimensions. You you when you sleep, you have dreams right and when you have those dreams that's a whole different dimension that you're operating in um so you have to be aware of that and and know how do i when you say when i say grow the mind grow the mind is the door to the spirit and the physical mm -hmm. it's the mind that it's the mind that helps you be able to take things from the spirit realm and bring it into the physical everything that was created everything um this microphone, right? Mm -hmm. Before it became physical, it first of all existed in somebody's mind. Somebody yes. thought of the microphone and said, how do we make something that helps to amplify voice? Yes. And then started trying to figure it out and then came up with the idea of a microphone. It probably wasn't, it didn't start with the microphone, it started with a megaphone. And so that metamorphosed into microphone. So every generation also has a way of improving on the previous generation. Mm -hmm. So. And, but if you are not, if your mind isn't open and developed to a certain level, you cannot catch things that are possible in the spirit and then be able to see them in your mind and then create them in your life. I think with my last conversation with Fikayo, that it, it also came up, you know, that, awesome. that, that ideas are all over. It is in the universe. So yes. I may have that idea. You may have that idea. The yes. next person may have that idea. Definitely. The difference is Definitely. who comes out first. Definitely. With, with, with it. And it, it's so... It's so beautiful that this this thing has been coming up quite a lot in many of my conversations with you know guests on this podcast yeah. about ideas and conceptualization and everything. So thank you very much for bringing that uh, awesome. back on because then I think it's a key message that needs to get to our people. Yes. This concept of ideas and. Um, manifesting those ideas into realization well that's why i have the coach here that is what the that is what coaches are for yes. so let's break this down many times when we hear coaches from an african perspective is a football soccer coach football coach <laughs> is a basketball coach yeah you understand true, uh -huh. true. and then i'm calling you coach triple a yes <laughs> so for those quarter 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 who don't understand that please let's break down as a coach what kind of coach you are because i know we've talked we've talked but we've not really broken down broken so that down. my grandmother in the village <laughs> will know what this kind of coach is yes fantastic and it's it's and I, I agree with you. I thank you for that question because we have gone through this process um, practically over the years. Because when we started coaching in Africa, 
it's like you said, it's not something that is people we people know about. So there was a lot of sensitization of people trying to get them to understand and experience coaching, understand what coaching is, and people start getting on board with coaching. Now you have a lot of people that are around and say, I'm coach this, coach that, coach that, coach this, I'm coaching, I'm coaching. Yeah, but it's fine and it's good. Um, what matters is that you understand what a coach can do for you. So, so first of all, use that image of a coach that the sports coach it's a good image to use um so i one of the things i always use is um there was a movie uh creed creed mm -hmm. one part one mm -hmm. which is um sylvester stallone and um michael b jordan and um the work and i always use that i always take the clip of the fight and then the work that um, Sylvester Stallone was doing for Michael B. Jordan. And I said, that is the job of a coach, especially my kind of coach. I'm what you call a peak performance life and leadership coach. So basically, I help you improve your performance in life, in your relationship, in your marriage, in your work, in your business. My job is to help you perform at the optimum of your potential. That's my job. So I sit with you. I help you strategize. I help you look at your strengths, your weaknesses, your opportunities, and your threats. I help you look at your current situation and then help you um, visualize your possibilities. And when we visualize those possibilities, I then help you set up a plan on how can you be able to get to those places that you need to be. And the interesting part about my work is that I work with any and everyone. So I can help a doctor become a better doctor, not because I know anything about medicine, but I know about human mind and how your potent, how it can help you sharpen your potential and pursue your goals. So I've been doing it for be over for about almost 15 years now. And then I have worked with top leaders. I enjoy working with top leaders, people like Nana. I enjoy working with them because they are high performance people. I call them high performance people. people hey, I am? Yes, you are. Oh, yes, you are. Yes, Nana is, don't let her deceive you. Nana is a high performance human being. Um, if Nana was a car, Nana would be a Ferrari. So don't, don't, oh, no, wh don't. Why not a Bugatti? Oh, well, a Bugatti, yeah, maybe because of the curves. Oh, or uh, a Lamborghini. Has, or a Lambo, or a Lambo. Yeah, I think, yeah, those have a little more curves because of the African, African woman that you are, you know. But then again, you find out that um, mm -hmm. high performance people like that, I enjoy working with them because they are driven. So what they just need most of the times is guidance and clarity. So they go for it. Um, there's a client of mine who I enjoy working with. She's a Ghanaian. She's, in, she's a Ghanaian executive, top executive in Ghana. And she, you know, when she said, all she needs, coach, what, this is what I want to work on next. And we go. And then she's boom, 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 boom. And then she's coming back. I got this award. I achieved this. I got this award. I'm like, there you go. So they, they, they give me joy, literally. Mm -hmm. And there are people who themselves, sometimes you find people that um, the reason why they're not performing at their peak is because of the, they're stuck mentally and emotionally. So I get them, help them get unstuck emotionally and mentally as well for them to be able to perform at their peak. And that also appears, that also works in the area of relationships as well. So I work with marriages, I work with um, couples as well to help them break away from the emotional rot that is around their relationship and their marriage to be able to clear those debris for them to be able to have more clarity and more freedom to love themselves and be loved and enjoy their relationships better. So that's, there you are. So I am, I am a peak performance coach that operates in every area of your life. Amen. Woo. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. I don't, I, I, I don't, I don't need a pastor. I need a coach. <laughs> oh my. I don't need a pastor. Yeah. I need a coach. So we're here in Canada where we are with, you know, immigration, being an immigrant mm -hmm. coming here, not you per se, but mm -hmm. the immigrant population here and the difficulties that some of us face yeah. um if a person if let's say the person is a single mother or is having issues with their relationship is um stuck or whatnot or trying to find a way into the workforce when they come to you to 
they come to you because they have this vision of getting to some place, you know, yeah. like in five years, yeah. buying a house. Yeah. yeah. Or buying a home. Let me use a home. Let, buying a home for the family. Um, how, uh, using that as a scenario, how would you assist this person? How would you coach this person to reaching that, you know, five year maximum plan? So first things okay. first, mm -hmm. I do what is called the back to the future. Back to the future. So first things first is I help you. First, no, I think the first thing where we start is we do what I call a discovery. So I want mm -hmm. to understand where you are, what the mm -hmm. challenges are. A lot of times when I work with clients, they come and meet me and tell me, oh, um, coach, this is where I'm dealing with right now. I need help with this. Mm -hmm. And I'm going, okay, let's have, let's have a 45 minutes diagnostic mm -hmm. conversation. Mm -hmm. So let's just diagnose where we are. And, um, and you're a medical person, so you understand the concept of diagnosis. Mm -hmm. and, um, and a lot of times I'll give you an example. There's a client who has walked up to me who said they wanted coaching in their performance at work. They felt they were performing at work. They wanted to get more um, coaching to help them be able to be sharp at work and be able to get better results. And I said, okay, cool. Um, let's have a conversation. So we did the conversation, and in that conversation, we both realized <laughs> that the challenge wasn't a performance. The challenge was she was dealing with a lot of emotional, um, emotional, uh, how, what you might call, um, you know, when someone feels clogged emotionally. So she was mm -hmm. clogged emotionally. She was having issues with her, her husband. She was having issues with her siblings. She was having issues emotionally, and she wasn't in good spaces with those people. And then we kind of realized that the challenge is that you were in, you were, it wasn't your performance at work. It was because it was your off, your off work life that's actually affecting your performance on work. So let's deal with that. And so we started working on that for about five, six sessions. And then by the time she got to a place of freedom and clarity and, and then she was able to relate better with all those people, her performance at work went to up them. north. Right. So that is it. So sometimes that's more the reason why in my own process as coaching, you don't just tell me, oh, I want to, I want to set goals for my work. I'm like, okay, cool. I have to do it. If you don't do a diagnostic, I can't work with you. I have to do a diagnostic with you. I need to know exactly what I'm doing, what we're dealing with. Um, mm -hmm. You might think this is what the issue is. We, we might find out, find out. And from the way I work, we will both understand and agree that this is where the challenge really is. And then this is what we need to work on. And so that's what the process um, and that's the first thing I do. The second thing we do is that we then go back to the future. So when I mean by back to the future, I do what is called a 50-year challenge for you. So it depends on how old you are and how old you want to live, how long you want to live. Um, I do, it could be 40 years, it could be 30 years. So if you're in your 60s, it will probably be doing you a 30-year challenge. If you're in your 50s, it will probably be doing maybe a 40-year challenge. Or it depends. But by the time you're like 85, where you literally... Don't, they're not doing much anymore. 85, 90, we're not doing much anymore. Where do you want to be with your life? What do you have? What would you want to look back and say, I achieved with my life? So when we clarify what that is, and that, that spans different areas of your life, there are what I call 14 pivotal areas of life. There is your health and well being, your, um, your business and your career, your finances your um your self esteem your uh what's it called your network and relation and friendships your relationship your love life and your romance your um your personal achievements different about 14 of them in total that you that help you help you um create a wholesome life put it that way so when we look at all those areas and then we then determine what where do, what do you want to achieve with your life at the end in those 14 areas. When we clarify that, we then then are able to come back to now and set that three-year goal that you're talking about. So, because you already know where you're going in the end. So, what you're, where you're going in the end is what then informs what you must do now. Mm. So, if you're not clear what you're going to go and do in the end, if you are, so you take, for instance, if you leave your house right now, Nana, mm -hmm. and you just step out of the house, no, not you, let me not use you. Somebody else steps out of the house, right? And they sell the house. And then you, you ask them, hey, where are you going? 
I don't know. I'm just going down there. Where? Down there. Where's down there? I don't know. Just down there. Wouldn't you be worried for the person's mental mental health? You probably will be worried. You'll be like, okay, that's very, very weird. And then they just keep walking and walking and saying, anybody asks them, I'm just going down there. I'm just, I'm just going, Sha. Those are I'm going. <laughs> You know, I, I'm laughing because I, I had a conversation this afternoon with a good friend of mine and mm -hmm. I, I was asking about a plan coming forth and the answer that was given was not very clear. Mm -hmm. So I said, um, I cannot come in to assist you if I don't know the clarity of what or where what you want to do. Mm -hmm. So think about it and let me know exactly what the plan is. I'm doing A, B, C, D, so that I know where to come in. But okay. that is a communication problem and a mindset problem that I find with many of us um, of, you know, um, how do you call African it? origin? Uh, African origin. Yeah. That the way we communicate is very, very um, effaced with the understanding that I need to know what you're thinking mm. without it being communicated to me. Mm. And I don't want to make assumptions and mm. I don't want to think for you. Mm. I want to know what you're thinking so mm. that I know where to assist you. Yes. Yes. 100%. So I, I find that a, a lot of our communication on the continent and what we've brought here as human beings. And it's not only as other people as well, but we need to be very clear about what we're saying. So therefore, sometimes so, I get... Mm -hmm. Yeah, sorry, Nana. Sorry I I'm caught talking. you short. Um, because I, I, I just to add to what you're saying, and it's because if you look at our background as Africans, we weren't really raised to have a long-term future plan. Our systems weren't built on long-term future plans. You, you ask, does Ghana have a 50-year plan? Does Nigeria have a 50-year plan? No. There's none that is clearly written anywhere that anybody knows. But you know, in the US, you have things called the American dream. Or you have even from, and these have been ideas that have been inculcated since like, centuries ago of oh what it means to be american there's an idea yes it's not perfect but there's an idea and what it means to be canadian there's an idea what it means to be british there's an idea we do, didn't necessarily have an idea of where our country is going where our leaders are where we are really pursuing what kind of country do we want to build everybody comes or politicians come and they give you different um uh what you call uh sub stories of oh uh this is what we, when i when you make me president i will build roads i will i will give you water those are basic amenities of life literally it shouldn't be anybody's manifestos you understand but because we are not necessarily visionary in our thinking we don't necessarily know how to demand that because so it's the same thing and how it affects, affects a country and I'm getting um, excited about this now. How, how it affects a country boils down to the family unit. So you find that a lot of men don't necessarily have a vision of where they want, what kind of family they want to build and what they want to do with their lives. And so they're just trying to make things happen and you know, just try and succeed, you know, we, that's why we, everything for us is very material because it's the material things that help us, that we place our idea of success in. So, oh, what do you want to achieve? I want to buy, I want to own five houses. I want to drive three flashy cars. I want to do, so once I'm doing that, I feel I'm successful. But then in your heart, there's still a, a gaping hole because your life doesn't necessarily have purpose. So, when you are clear about where you are going as a man, you can then, when you're now toasting a woman, you can say, <laughs> this is my vision. This is where I'm going. And because I'm going here, I would like you, because I like the qualities I see in you, I need a woman like you to help me. We, have to, we have to do a special session. 
<laughs> so I need a woman like you to help me. And then the, if the woman too knows where she is going, she can look at where you are going as a man because most of the times in Africa, the man is the head of the home, he's the leader of the clan, right? Mm -hmm. So she can look at where you are going, the picture, the manifesto that she, he has declared to her, and then she can look at her own plan and say, okay, it fits this manifesto and our personalities fit, this can work. But because male, uh, the man and the woman, neither of them have a clear vision where they're going to. They just make decisions based on, oh, I like you, he likes me, he's ambitious, he's driven, um, he's caring, and all those things. They are good, but they are not, they are not the things that will hold a marriage the, together. The foundation. Long. You understand? Mm -hmm. So when you face challenges, you face situations, you can easily remind yourself, this is where we say we're going, you remember? This is where we say, this is just a... It's just a bump in the road. Let's not this use this to stop that beautiful picture we already we already have in our mind that we want to create together. Mm -hmm. So it makes both of them commit more. It's not just about because once you start building your the foundation of a relationship on emotions, emotions are the most unreliable things in a human body. Emotions are epileptic. You wake up to one morning and you look at the person and you're like. How did I even end up with this human being? How this person, <laughs> this person, how me, me, oh me, a whole beautiful queen like me, this guy <laughs> with his pot belly looking so <laughs> what's it called? And so, because we, mm -hmm. but because if you this if that mind was built on a purpose, on mm -hmm. a vision. You begin to see beyond the person, and the, you won't just it won't just be about the person's flaws, but because you both of you are building something that is bigger than both of you. Mm -hmm. That's what makes it make sense. So, as far as I'm concerned, that is what I help. One of the things I help people do is help you understand your purpose, understand your vision of life, and then how then do we now set goals now to move, put you on that path? And the truth is, it's not how long you've been on the wrong path. What is important is that the day you realize it, you move, you find the right path and you start, on, you start working on it. I don't care whether you're 70 years old. When you find the right path, you start working on it. Course correct. Mm, yes. It's okay to course correct. You know, you were speaking about, you know, making plans into the 40-year, 50-year plan. Mm. And um, I was thinking about an, a program that years ago, it, it's out there, futuristic planning. Mm. Being a futuristic thinker and a futuristic, you know, um, planner. Yeah. And these are sometimes what uh, people do as moonshots that you know you may not ever get there, but yeah. you still create that plan. Even if you do 1% is better than nothing. You do 10% yes. is better than nothing. Yes. Nothing. Yes. So for my people who are listening, who are watching, please, I hope you've taken a lot out of this because yeah. it is really, really packed. You got to think about your future. You got to plan about your future. You have to make decisions not based on emotions, but critical thinking. Use what you're God given, and also understanding that you're not just a, 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 a human being, but you are three. You have your mind, body, and so oh, it's the, <laughs> you have your, your body, your, your bo soul, and your spirit. and your spirit. Yes. Ah. Okay. Yeah, your mind is part of your soul, actually. Your I also wanted is... to add something to that and say, mm -hmm. in line with what you were saying, um, Nana, is that there's a saying, there's a quote that says that you reach for the moon, mm -hmm. and if you miss, you fall among the stars. Stars, yes. So when you do, so that's what you're trying to talk about. So even if you don't achieve the hundred percent of what you set your mind to, at least you know that you have made progress in the direction in which you have chosen. There's one of my favorite songs in the world. And one of the lines in that song is by Whitney Houston, um, Greatest Love. He mm -hmm. said, I decided long ago never to walk in anyone's shadows. If mm -hmm. I fail, if I succeed, at least I've lived as I believed. Yes. So that's what's important, that you live as you believe. Lived, yes. You believe, rather. So yes. your belief will determine your um your how you live your life you, you mm -hmm. understand so your decisions will determine your destiny yeah you know i did mention that there are three parts to who we are there's the spirit the soul and the body and the truth of the matter is if you look at the idea of the spirit 
you are as a human being you are indeed a spirit you transcend the physical literally you are a powerful being, a powerful being who can operate in three dimensions all at the same time all at the same that's how powerful you are but we and we're not aware because we are so focused on the physical and the trappings of the physical world life but then again you can actually go into the spirit realm and manifest there and bring things ideas into the physical and those are the things that people who are the champions on earth people who achieve great um, feats that's how they do it they transcend the physical and go deeper there was a time when it was said that human beings could not run a mile in 60 seconds mm -hmm. but a guy called roger bannister decided to do it and then he practiced for it but he did a lot of psychological work on himself that he was able to run the mile in 60 seconds and then when he did that um um 60 second mile the the next year 30 pe about 300 people in fact did the mm -hmm. same thing so all of a sudden science at the time had said that human beings are not capable of achieving that that if you do it, your body will literally explode. Your organs will shut down, will explode. The scientists had done all that in their limited understanding at the time. But this guy worked on himself and saw that he could do it, and he achieved it. And the next, so it wasn't an anomaly. The next year, about 300 athletes did the same thing. So it became something that it was, it was, it was normal for human beings to be able to achieve. So there's so much potential and so much that you can achieve. All that is limiting you is your beliefs. And your mindset, yes, your beliefs, your mindset, your yeah. attitude, your behaviors. Yes. I, I, I can't stress this in, in, enough. I, 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 if if you any part of the world, please, how can one get a hold of you, Coach Triple A, uh, Coach wow. Alex? How can we get a hold of you? So, because as much as many of us think we're doing certain things, some. There is this proverb that says that the person that is cutting along the path um, of the farm does not know that it is, you know, going left or right behind him or her. Yeah. So some of us may be doing it and we think we're doing it, but sometimes we need persons such as yourself to say, pause, let's yeah. take a critical look at what you're doing yeah. and let's refocus and put you together yeah. and continue the path yeah and, and i'm and that's why i'm here that's my assignment that's my purpose in life um i will say to you that the right now um, our website is under reconstruction so we we'll, i saw we'll that down and we're reconstructing stuff so at the mm -hmm. moment uh, you can't get me through my website at the moment uh, in case you're watching this, well, by the time that sort starts out, you'll probably be able to find me on info at alexadifemi.com. You're able to find me on that. But if not, if by the time you're watching this, that hasn't been sorted out, you can get me at coach triple a at gmail.com. That's triple is a single P, by the way. So mm -hmm. coach triple a at gmail.com. And then you can find me on social media. I am an I I I um one of the fastest you can reach out to me is through Instagram and LinkedIn. So mm -hmm. on Instagram, I'm at Coach Triple A, one word, Coach mm -hmm. Triple A. Triple was a single P. And on Instagram and on LinkedIn, I'm at Alex Ade Adifemi. Alex mm -hmm. Ade Adifemi. You can send me a DM. You can send me a DM on that. Please follow me on Instagram. I'm trying to grow my followers and my followership, rather. So please um, be nice and follow me. Just like Nana said, you should subscribe. And if you're not subscribing mm -hmm. to Nana's show and Nana's page, you are on a mm -hmm. long time. I mean, you know what that means in Nigeria, I mean, long thing, you are way behind. <laughs> You're way behind and you are missing out. You're missing out. Yes. But before we, we go, we round up, I would say the, the intention of the podcast is about storytelling, but in, it's not only just to tell stories, but to motivate, inspire. Mm -hmm. And for this particular is the coaching, the yeah. gift of coaching, the gift that you receive from Coach A, mm -hmm. to the wisdom that you get to help align or realign your misaligned life, putting it together mm -hmm. for your future. At the mm -hmm. end of the day, when you put your life together for the future, it is not about me. It mm -hmm. is not about coach. It is about you 
your success, your happiness, your growth, and everything in between. Ah, my goodness. Wow. Wow. It's one hour already. It is one hour already. And I'm looking at the like list. Getting started. It looks like we're just getting started, but I will not waste too much time. Yes. Um, yes. I, I think we've established that this conversation was about growth, but as a coach, what is your most important goal? I'm not sure whether we touched that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think we touched that. Um, yeah. my most important goal is to unlock, um, unlock, I'll put it this way. I think where I like to put it is mm -hmm. unlock the excellence in people to help them become exceptional and consistently achieve incredible results. My most important goal is to help people unlock their excellence in, through their mind and, 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 and unlock their excellent mindset to help them become exceptional and achieve consistently achieve incredible results. So if you are out there and you want to constantly achieve incredible results in your business, in your career, as a leader, as a spouse, as an individual, then I can work with you. We have coaching products. We have coaching um, content and sessions that can help you be able to unlock all those things in different areas. Now, mm -hmm. um, I have a strong love and passion for people of my color, mm -hmm. the black people, because I feel, like I said, we have so much potential trapped in us that we're not finding ways to unlock. And then, um, so I'm very, very... Um, I have a soft heart for people of my own, of my, of my color. And then, so if, if I may, and so I'm saying African people, I'm saying African people in diaspora, if you're Caribbean, you're African mm -hmm. in diaspora, wherever you are, your roots is Africa and, um, mm -hmm. Africa is the motherland. And so if you're from the motherland, whether from now or from way back hundreds of years ago, or you're mm -hmm. from the motherland, if you're a motherland, my, I have a passion to help because we have so much potential. We have, we are so, we are so alike. We have passion. We are passionate people. We are colorful people. We are um, expressive people. And because of that, a lot of times we still are still not sure how, how to get the best out of ourselves. And I have dedicated the better part of about 25 years of my life trying to help the, understand how to help the black man unlock his potential and become a, become a thriving human being and create global impact. So pretty much that's it, what it, I'm about. It, I, I love it. I love it. But one of the things that I did right here was that we live in a predominantly white society. Yes. It's, yes. We are in a white world. Mm. And sometimes you face racism, discrimination, and all those potentialities that pull you or hold you or discredit you. So yes. whilst you were talking about our passion and everything, yeah. um, I, I was thinking recent. I had a recent experience with you know passive aggressive, um, that borders onto you know discrimination and stuff. Mm. And I'd let it go, let it go. But I decided no, en enough of this nonsense. But then <laughs> the people that you actually have the conversation with, if a person tells you it's your perception, but it's your reality, mm. it's called gaslighting. Yes. <laughs> I, I am not giving you a perception. I am telling you my reality yeah. as yeah. a black woman in a white space. This yeah. is my reality. Yeah. So that word was quickly changed because I had the language and the tools to speak to white fragility. But if you're coaching somebody who doesn't have that, it's like, how do you navigate this? Because the reason why racism came in here, because it's a subject that men will, are going to experience, whether directly, indirectly. Well, indirectly, yeah. Yes, in a certain form, whether through passive aggressive behaviors, whether through, um, how do we call it, um, discrimination, yeah. whatever that it comes through, they're going to experience it. As a coach, what is the best? or a critical advice that you can give? Know who you are. 
know your value. That's the very first thing. And I think, and I say this a lot because I'm starting to, I'm going to be doing some work in with immigrants, especially, um, also especially because for African immigrants, um, because I'm black immigrants, immigrants generally, but you know, like I said, I have a, I have a passion for black people. Um, I realized that a lot of us, um, because we come to Canada and Canada um, has a way of letting us um, believe that we, all that we have amassed, all the experience, all the development that we have created is not enough when you come here. There's, a, there's that mis mis misconception. Let me put it that way. And maybe we have to blame ourselves for those misconceptions and not anybody else. Uh, that all those experience and those expertise are not, not necessarily valued here, which is not mm -hmm. true. Um, yes, there are systems and structures and bureaucratic systems. And just like it is in Canada, it exists in every part of the world, right? And it's for you to look at those systems and then not let those systems stop you, but then use those systems to rise to where you want to be. But if you're not clear who you are and what you want to achieve while you are here, if you're not purposeful with your Im immigrant life, you end up just falling into anywhere that they put you. And that's what's happened to a lot of us. So I was having a conversation with someone the other day and um, she is a PhD holder. She's worked in education. She had worked with international organizations like, um, uh, let me just put it on international organizations. And she had schooled in the UK, got a PhD, got a master's in the UK, got a, master, uh, a PhD back in Nigeria. And she's done some top level work. But then she's gotten here and then she start doing customer service. First of all, as far as I'm concerned, Canada is not maximizing your potential if they if you're stuck in that kind of job. There's that, nothing wrong in those kind of sure. jobs. There's that nothing wrong in sure. them. There's mm -hmm. absolutely nothing wrong with them. It's a good thing to start off with those jobs and you know get get when you when you just arrive get those kind of jobs uh, if that's what you can find at least make some money and start paying bills. That's very very important. But you must be clear who you are, not let the job define you. Be clear who you are and where you're going. So once you're clear who you are and where you're going, it's a lot easier for you to then begin to say, okay, this is where I'm going. This is who I am. This is where I'm going. And then I can then present myself from that perspective while I'm still doing some of those jobs to meet my to, to pay my bills and meet my needs. But don't let those jobs begin to define you. No, this is who you are. Your PhD order has worked international organizations. So I put it this way. Let's say... I use this concept of the guy called Brad. So Brad is somebody who is also a PhD holder in Canada. And then Brad, for some reasons, fell in love with this Ghanaian beauty. Maybe her name is Nana. And then Brad decides that, oh, I love Nana so much. And Nana says, I want to move back to Ghana. And says, okay, you know what, Nana, I love you. Brad is a, is, is, is a white guy. Mm -hmm. And he's successful. He's doing okay. He's a PhD holder. He lectures. He does other stuff and all the stuff. And... Um, and uh, he's, he's professional. And then they decide to move over to Ghana. Now, let me ask you a question. Do you think Brad will go to Ghana and apply for customer service jobs? No. No. But then uh, you then take, uh, let me say, you take uh, a, another brother of mine, Kojo. Kojo moves over to Canada. And then he's a PhD holder as well, who's had worked in international organizations. But then he comes here and he has to pick up a customer service job. I'm not against it, like I said, as long as you do not forget who you are and where you are going. Once those two things are clear, you are unstoppable. But if those two things are not clear, you will get stuck in the rut. I, I, I think sometimes we, we still maintain a colonized mindset in coming so, in here. So uh, 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 Brad will go over to Africa and he will come in as an expatriate. And yes. then he's paid and he's treated as one. Yes, that's part of the part of the challenge is us. And there's nothing wrong because he is supposed to be an expatriate because mm -hmm. he comes. But then he migrated just like any Kojo who migrates to North to, America. Yes. And then who's a highly decorated professor. And then he comes here and he's trying to make ends meet and just find any kind of job. Whereas he's supposed to come here and he's supposed to be able to sit down and even lecture lecturers here. 
That's the truth. Because of his lead, Kojo might have more, because of his line of work, might have more experience in, in, in certain things than a Brad will have going to Ghana. But then we do that mistake, and because we come here and say, ah, when you get here, there's no really, you have to get Canadian experience. experience. And so because of that, then you say, oh, just get anything just to get Canadian experience and pay your bills, which are very, very important. I get it. But what matters is not what you're doing now. It's where you're going tomorrow. So where are you going? And so that's where I have a challenge with my people when we come here. We're not clear where we're going. We're not clear what's the picture. A friend of mine is now a counselor in Kitchener. He knew where he was going. If he didn't know, he won't be there. He's or He was under 40 and he was a counselor in, in Kitchener. He, oh. wouldn't have, he probably wouldn't have achieved that in Nigeria. Why the right? But over here, there's possibilities available. Canada is a better system. And if you know where you're, where you're going and what you're doing, you will achieve a lot more. Guys, on that note, I don't think I can add anything more. <laughs> know where you are going. Yeah. That is a beautiful ending. Coach Triple A, thank you for saying yes. Thank you for coming on the Nana Yaya podcast. And I, I think we are going to have more of these conversations for our people all over I'm in the available. diaspora. I am not David Do. I am not unavailable. I'm available. <laughs> I am available. You go, they see me. <laughs> yes, sir. Oh, thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for having me. And I really appreciate the invite and for bringing me on your platform and for sharing your platform with me and you're sharing your audience to hear the things I have to say. For considering me as somebody that has something to say at all, I really appreciate it. I don't take it for granted. Thank you so much. God bless you. And for everyone who's listened, uh, please reach out to me. If you have any questions, you have anything you want to uh, discuss or you have any concerns, reach out to me, Instagram. And um, I, I probably hope Nana, I believe Nana will be able to put it there, Coach Triple A, and then the email address as well. You can reach out to me on any of those. And, you know, let's make magic happen. Let's help you achieve your potential and be all you are meant to be.